definitely need a haircut. Hi friends, welcome to my channel. I'm Tirso and I'm an art director based in New York City. In today's video, we're covering typography. I've gotten a lot of feedback that the before and afters have been really helpful, so I found a screen on the MTA Transit app that is mostly type, and we'll be redesigning it with only typography. Okay, 95% typography with some gestalt theory sprinkled in there. There's a lot to do, but stay with me, we're all in this together. I do have an announcement to make. I'm offering a free 30 minute mentoring session with me if you sign up via the link below. If there's a project that you're working on or if there's something you're struggling with, I'd love to just chat with you one on one. As always, let's assess what we're looking at and find opportunities for stronger design. The entire screen is designed in Helvetica. Since this is part of MTA branding, we'll only work with Helvetica, which is great because it has a lot of weights. For anyone new to typography, a typeface is a set of glyphs and a font is a particular set of glyphs within a typeface. So Helvetica is a typeface, Helvetica Light and Helvetica Bold would be fonts within that typeface. All right, back to our design. There's some alignment issues over here. I think this section is really low contrast and then overall we can push the hierarchy within the type. Let's do this top down. For this trip details header, it's a little weird to style it in italics. Italics are used for a subtle callout and often used within a block of text. For a heavier callout, you should use bold. So let's remove the italic and then change it to bold. This is a personal preference of mine, but I don't like descenders in headings. Descenders are parts of the letters that drop below the baseline. Conversely, ascenders are parts of the letters that go above the X height. To get rid of the descender on the P, we can switch this to all caps so that the top and bottom are flat, which matches the flat top and bottom of the section. This trip search button is really clunky and it also feels really dated. It says trip search because they're trying to communicate the screen you're going to, but I think you're smart enough to remember what screen you just left, so let's switch it to a back button. UX design is a whole other topic, but for now our focus is typography. This divider line is a little too thick, so I just want to bring that down. Since the screen is all text, it's important not to add any unnecessary design elements like these lines and even the border on the box. I'm going to remove them for now. And then for this box, I do want to soften it a little bit, so I'm just going to add some rounded corners. We have the opportunity to apply two Gestalt principles to this. The first is common region, which users perceive items in the same region as a group. This trip plan relates to the information below, so let's bring it inside of the box, which I did here. Okay, great, now they're friends. The other Gestalt principle is proximity, where users group things that are closer together and separate things when they're further apart. To give more separation between the subhead and the information, we can add a rule. The information on the left side is specific to the right side, so they should also be closer together. Since they're closer together, we don't need the colons at the end. Now let's tackle the type. A couple notes on creating hierarchy first is to create contrast, use different weights, but make sure to skip a weight. Also, if you're using a lighter weight, you can go up in point size, and if you're using a heavier weight, you can go down in point size. For this card, I designed it two ways so that you can see how the rule can be implemented. On the left, I started with a bold and smaller point size, and then on the right, I started with a lighter weight with a bigger point size. My preference is the one on the right, but you should always explore some designs before committing to one. Now that we've committed, we can add some color. I mentioned earlier that this area has low contrast and you can always check this by turning everything to grayscale. So the contrast is pretty low. The reason we need high contrast in grayscale is because one, we know it'll work in color and two, it helps people who are colorblind. We like to be inclusive. Let's match this section to the card style as we did in the section above. The styling is pretty easy here because we only have a subhead and some list items. I went ahead and created some contrast within those list items. The original section was designed in red, and technically pink, 
but it's because it's an alert section. Now that we turn the background white, a red alert icon would stand out more. Let's just start this section by switching it to the card layout. If you read this block of text, the track number and the status are just listed at the end, and I think they need to be called out more. Let's remove them for now. This train two over here, there's no reason why there's a line break, and there's clearly room over here, so let's bring that up. Move this over. For this red highlight, let's match it to the red in the alert icons that we created earlier, and then we'll also round the corners to match the card layout. We need to find a place for the track number, which I think makes sense next to the info. I stack the type so it fits within the space. When you're doing this, just make sure to use separate text boxes. Again, I want to mention that track is bold, so it's smaller, and then 16 is light, so it's bigger, but visually, they feel balanced. I brought back the status text that we lost earlier. Do we even need the word status? I think we can convey status differently by simply making it a label. I made it green because it says on time, if we were designing the entire app, we would have a different color for each status. And the last detail that we lost were the dots that denoted each station. I brought them back here. They broke this up earlier because they have these rules going through. This is another example on not letting your design elements get in the way of your actual design. I just want to match this green dot as the same green on our label. Since we have space down here, we can actually bring up the next station so that the designs continue. We're almost there. I always like to embrace micro design, so I have a couple tiny changes. The first is to remove this gray box. The blue can actually extend all the way to the top and we can turn the UI white. Since our cards have rounded corners, I also wanted to round off the caps on the hamburger menu. And then lastly, our content down here extended past the banner, so I just want to add a shadow to further that separation. Thanks for taking the time to stick with me through this. There's a lot to learn about typography, but eventually you'll learn how to implement these principles into your designs. If you haven't already, subscribe to this channel, and I'll see you in the next video.